Hello and welcome to What the Math. Today we're talking about Chapter Six: E Measuring Central or Center of Data. Uh, essentially, we're going to be talking about statistics when it relates to the middle of the data. In statistics, there are two important um, ways of measuring data, and I'm going to show it to you visually. So the two important things in statistics are the center. That's the first one. And center refers to basically the middle of the data. So this is where we talk about terms like the mean, the mode and the median, which is what we're talking about today. But the other important value or important uh, measurement is the spread of the data. Uh, and the spread refers to basically the thickness, which I'm going to show you in a second. So this is re this refers to how spread out data is from the center. So if you look at these two histograms, the left one, the blue one, it's actually less spread, uh, sorry, more spread out. So this is more thick than this, but they can actually have completely the same center. So their mean can be the same, their mode can be the same, and their median can be the same. What is different is their range. So this value, this, this value right here is different. So the, the left data is actually more spread out than the right data. But we're going to talk about this in the next video, so I'm going to just erase this for now so it doesn't confuse you. Today we're just talking about center, and specifically we're talking about the mean, the mode, the median, and to some extent the range. And to investigate these three values, we're going to use this example from page 172, example 5, and this is in chapter 6. And it's a really awesome example because it applies to so many of one of us. Uh, a teenager recorded a time in minutes per day he spent playing computer games over a two-week holiday period. This is the values. Uh, and using technology to assist determine the mean, median, and daily game time to teenager recorders. So we're not going to use technology yet. This is going to be our next step, but let's just do it by hand first. So yes, and also do record how many minutes per day you spend playing video games and then report to me as well. I'm kind of curious because I am sure I spend a lot more than you. All right, so let's start with um, how do we find the mean for this and what is the mean? I'm going to use the color yellow color to to basically designate mean and mean is another word for average you've probably encountered this before uh i'm not sure why it's called a mean it just is so just remember that mean is the average and the average um is essentially all of these numbers added up together divided by the number of numbers so let me just say it again and uh, the symbol for mean is actually x bar so x bar equals to all numbers added up, all numbers added, divided by total uh, number of values, total number of values. So in this example, we just have to add up this and plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this, and so on, and then divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Divided by fourteen, this will give us the mean. It's yellow, it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna just change it to red. Uh divided by fourteen. And this will give us the mean. Um now I'm also I'm also gonna rewrite this in in uh, mathematical terms because you see this symbol a lot, especially on the test, and so you have to understand what it means. And the symbol I'm talking about is the Greek S basically refers to the sum. So here, this is what you'll probably see on the test. This refers to the sum of all numbers n. So n here is 14. Our n is 14. Uh, starting with the number 1, i equals 1. So the sum of all numbers here equals 2 uh, x x starting with the first x, xi. And then all of this divided by n, which is the number 14. So this right here is what our mean is. So just, just try to understand this again. So basically, s refers to the sum, sum of all numbers, and there's n of them. And uh, it's the numbers starting with a number i, which is i equals 1, divided by n, which is 14 right here, n is 14. All right, and that's the mean. So now let's talk about uh, median. Median is going to be right here because it's the middle, so just to see you remember it easier. And median is essentially the middle of uh, all numbers, the middle of all numbers. When you put them in the line or on the line, um, it's the middle of all numbers. However, you can't just put it in the middle right here because that's not gonna give you the exact value. You actually have to put them in order first. So in other words, we have to reorder these numbers and then find the middle. So let's actually do this right now, starting with the smallest first. 
Okay, so I try to do my best. It's a little bit difficult with bigger numbers. It's very easy to make a mistake, which is why usually this is best to be uh, to be done on technology. And I'll show you how to do this after I finish the manual method. But essentially, this is these are the numbers from smallest to biggest. All right, so to find the median now, we have to actually use the formula n plus one divided by two, which will give us the a uh, number that we need to look at to find the median. So our median is n plus one plus, uh, n plus one divided by two, which is in our case fifteen divided by two is seven point five. So we're looking at the number between seven and eight. So this is a number between seven and eight. So let's just count from here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is where we're looking at right here. So this is our middle, and it's not an it's not one number, unfortunately. Uh, so we need to now find the median of these two values, which are 97 and 104. So to in order for us to find the median for this particular example, we have to take 97, add it to 104, and then divide it by two. Essentially, we just have to find the mean of these two numbers, uh, and this will give us. 201 divided by 2, which is 100.5, I believe. And this right here is our median. Now, if I did this correctly by hand, this is our median. We'll double check this on the calculator later, later, which is actually a very good thing to do. Always try to double check your work on a calculator if you're not sure about the numbers. And the last value we're going to talk about is the mode, or when you talk about range, it will be called modal class. Um, and this is essentially the number that is most common, mo the number that appears the most. So um, I think someone before mentioned that if you say a la mode in French, this means in fashion. So what is in fashion? Which number is the most fashionable? Which number is the most common? Um, and here we're just looking at a number that repeats the most. I don't think any of our numbers here repeat, so we don't actually have a mode. Uh, However, if we make this into a range value, we will have a mode eventually. Because here some of the numbers actually repeat more often than, uh, or some of the ranges repeat more often. So you'll have um, a mode using the range. Um, the easiest way to find the mode is on your calculator to look for the highest uh, bar on your histogram. So if I were to draw the histogram right here, this value right here, this bar right here is your mode. So essentially it's the highest, highest bar. Um, with the numbers or with frequency tables, it's also very easy to find them because you can just look at the most common number, the repeating number, and this will give you the mode as well. Um, the other word you may want to know is bimodal, which you may see in, on the test. Bimodal means there are two modes. So sometimes you have two bars that are the same. And this, this is, this is a bimodal example where you have two modes. But really, the only way of finding the mode uh, from all of these values is to essentially graph it first or make a frequency table first. Um, so let's actually try to uh, make a frequency table for another example. And let's take a look at, at example 7 on page 177. This is a, a table of uh, frequencies from, I believe it's tennis players. Yeah, tennis players serving um, aces during a tournament. Now, number of aces and frequency of aces. So uh, this is how many aces they serve. This is how often, how many, how often, how many, how often. So the frequency table here is for, is already given to you. And what we have to find is mean, median, mode uh, for this data. So basically, it's kind of like working backwards. Now, the easiest way of doing this is to use the table that's already given to you in the example uh, and try to come up with an easier way of interpreting it. So let's do it the same way they did it in the book. And the first thing we're going to do is rewrite the number of aces in a column like this. So basically, one is here, two is here, three is here. So rewrite them so that it's a little bit easier to understand. Now, next, we need to rewrite our frequencies. And the way it's done in the book and the way I actually think you should do it as well is to rewrite the frequencies first and then on the bottom, write the number of total frequencies. So in other words, what this gives you, this sum of frequencies, this is your total number of values. In other, it's it's the um, total number of values, which is also known as n. So this is your n. In the next column, what uh, the book decided to do, or the people who wrote the book, they, um, they actually uh, found the product of aces times frequency. In other words, what this number gives you, this number here, this number here, is the total number of aces for each frequency, 
and on the bottom, this number right here, sum of all f times x, this is total number of all aces, total number of aces, number of aces. Um, what this means is that now using these two numbers, you can easily find your mean. Essentially, if you take this and you divide it by this, you will have your mean because this is total number of aces. This is total number of um, frequencies. This divided by this will give you your median. Oh, sorry, your mean, your uh, your average of all of the aces per player. So to find the mean, we just have to divide sum of f x. This is sum of f x by sum of f or 179 divided by 55 and then whatever this number is um, then to find this is our mean to find our mode we just have to look at the frequency table i'm going to use red and this right here is the mode the most frequently appearing number the last thing you were missing is median now how do we find the median what they did in in the book and i think this is actually a good idea of doing as well is to do this is to use something called cumulative frequency and in other words it's um it's frequency as it accumulates uh, throughout throughout the table so right here let's just start with the first one this is frequency of four then over here it becomes 15 4 plus 11 is 15 then right here 15 plus 18 becomes 33 then right here becomes 46 plus seven becomes 53 and plus two it becomes 55. So as it accumulates throughout the table, you can actually write it down here. And um, it, this is basically in order. So it started with four, then 15 and so on and so forth. And this can help you find the median just using the table. So to find the median now, we have to remember that median is, I'm gonna use green for the median. Median is um, equals to n plus one divided by two. And we know that our n, which is right here, is 55. So our median equals to 55 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 28. So the 28th data, 28th number, is our median. Now, cumulative frequency shows you the numbers in order. So in other words, your 28th number is going to be located somewhere right here in between these two numbers. So this is located between 15 and 33. Or in other words, you can tell that your um, your median must be three because three corresponds to 33. So it's it's after two, and it's it's closer to three. So it's it's it must be three then. And the last thing we're going to do is double check all our work using a calculator. And this is something that you should definitely do, especially when it comes to um, questions where you have to do a lot of manual labor first, and then you're actually not sure if you did it correctly. So here, I actually didn't really find my um, my mean, so maybe we'll check that. Uh, we don't really know if our median is correct because maybe it's a two, maybe it's a three. And we only, we're only sure about the mode. So this is something we don't really need to double check because mode is pretty obvious. Um, and we don't really know our range. So maybe we want to find our range as well. So let's take a, take a look at our calculator. I'm going to go into my stat and on the left side, I already entered this actually, but on the left side, this is what we're entering our numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so these are number of aces. And on the right side, we're going to enter our frequency. And when you have this done, go into stat again and click on calc one variable stats. Uh, change the list here to L1, change the list here to L2 by clicking second two, then click on calculate, and there you go. So the symbol for the mean, mean is 3.25. Um, here N is 55, that we already knew that. Minimal X is one, median is three, so we were right about the median, median is three, and maximum X is six, so to find range, six minus one which will be five now we don't, we're not actually need, uh, required to find the range but sometimes you will be required to find the range one thing we can still do is we can draw a histogram because some questions will ask you now draw the histogram and show us what it looks like now if you're not sure how to draw the histogram if you, if you forgot you can do this on the calculator first and then copy it onto your paper basically you're going to stat plot second y uh, you have to turn the stat plot on so this was off by default you have to turn it on and then switch it to histogram mode, which is right here. Uh, change this value to L1, change that value to L2, 
this is usually not set at first, you have to change this to L2. And when you graph it, uh, you may have to zoom in, you'll have something like this once you zoom in. So here you can actually look at the graph, you can look at each of the values so that you can see that this is between 4, uh, with the y maximum being 18 I believe, and then uh, between 3 and 4. And this is our mode right here, so um, you can take a look at the histogram and compare some of your answers. But don't forget that if you are trying to answer your question entirely on your calculator, you have to make sure to provide the buttons that you've pressed. So write down stat, write down calc, one variable stat, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so this is pretty much it for measuring center of the data, or essentially measuring mean, mode, range, and median, which are some of the values that you'll be seeing a lot in statistics. Uh, and I think this is it for this video. It's kind of turned out to be a little bit longer than I hoped, but sorry about that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye-bye.